Welcome back to Truno Farm, where we uncover the real stories behind farming and fishing. Beneath the cold waters of Europe, an unexpected visitor has appeared. The American lobster, powerful, resilient, and highly competitive, is showing up in European seas where it does not belong. At first, it seemed like a curiosity, a rare catch, even a profitable surprise. At first, it looked like a lucky catch, but over time, its growing presence began to disturb the natural balance of European seas. This is the story of how a prized species crossed the ocean and became a problem where it didn't belong. In its native waters off the coast of North America, the American lobster is perfectly adapted to survive. It grows large lives long and thrives in cold, rocky environments. Its two powerful claws serve different purposes, one to crush hard shells, the other to tear prey apart. Even more impressive is its reproduction. A single mature female can produce tens of thousands of eggs in one season. In this ecosystem, the lobster is not a threat. It is part of a balanced food chain controlled by predators' environment and human fishing. But that balance only exists at home. For decades, the American lobster has been more than a species. It is an industry. From the cold seabed of Maine and Canada, lobsters are hauled up through dangerous fishing trips and sent straight into global markets. What was once a coastal food became a luxury dish served worldwide. High demand pushed fishermen farther offshore deeper and into harsher conditions. Steel traps, rising fuel costs, and violent seas turned lobster fishing into one of the most dangerous jobs on the ocean. At the table, lobster represents wealth and success. At sea, it represents risk pressure and survival. And this global demand would soon push the species far beyond its natural borders. Lobster fishing begins long before the catch is seen. Heavy steel traps are lowered into cold, dark waters and left on the seabed for days. Out at sea, fishermen work in some of the harshest conditions imaginable. Decks are slick with water waves strike without warning, and every rope carries danger. A single mistake, a tangled line, or a sudden swell can pull a person overboard in seconds. For divers, the risks are even greater. Near freezing temperatures, limited visibility, and the constant threat of entanglement turn each dive into a calculated gamble. At the same time, costs keep climbing. Fuel bait maintenance and equipment often consume profits before the lobsters ever reach the market. Lobster fishing is not just a harvest. It is a constant balance between survival risk and reward. At some point, the American lobster left home, but how it crossed an entire ocean is still debated. One theory points to ballast water from cargo ships traveling between North America and Europe. 
Another suggests escaped lobsters from farms or research facilities. Some may have even been released intentionally. No single answer explains it all. But once the lobster arrived, it didn't just survive, it adapted. And that was when a new problem began. The first confirmed sightings appeared in northern Europe off the coast of Norway. At the time, they seemed insignificant, a few unusual lobsters caught in traps, far from where they should exist. But the sightings didn't stop. Within a few years, fishermen in Scotland and France began reporting the same thing. Unfamiliar claws, larger bodies, and a species they had never targeted before. What once felt like rare accidents slowly turned into repeated encounters. Beneath the surface, a quiet expansion was taking place. The American lobster was not just visiting European waters, it was settling in. And with that realization, concern began to grow. When the American lobster settled in European waters, the first to feel the pressure were native European lobsters, smaller and less aggressive. They struggled to compete. The American lobster grows larger, reproduces faster, and fights harder for shelter on the rocky seabed. In battles for caves and feeding grounds, size and strength often decide the winner. Slowly, the balance began to shift. Where American lobsters appeared, native populations started to decline. What looked like a profitable newcomer was becoming a silent threat, not through sudden destruction, but through steady dominance. At first, the arrival of, Amer of American lobsters brought opportunity. They sold well. Prices were high. For many fishermen, the catch felt like a gift from the sea. But the benefits were short-term, as American lobsters spread native species declined, putting local fisheries and long-standing ecosystems at risk. An industry built over centuries now faced an uncertain future. What looked profitable today could become costly tomorrow, a trade-off between quick income and long-term survival. As the threat became clear, European authorities faced a difficult choice. Some regions banned the release and farming of American lobsters. Others encouraged fishermen to catch and remove them before they could reproduce further. Scientists called for monitoring, tracking, and tighter control of shipping practices. But stopping a species that has already adapted is never easy. The question was no longer how the lobster arrived, but whether humans could still slow its spread. The American lobster did not invade on its own. It followed routes created by humans' global trade shipping lanes and the constant movement of goods across oceans. What began as a luxury seafood quietly became a reminder of how easily natural borders can be broken. In a connected world, a species no longer needs to swim across oceans to spread. It only needs an opportunity.
the lobster is not the villain in this story. It is doing what nature designed it to do, survive, adapt, and dominate when conditions allow. The real responsibility lies with us, because this will not be the last species to cross the wrong ocean. And each time it happens, the question becomes harder to ignore. How much of the natural balance are we willing to risk for convenience, profit, and global demand?